Okay, it is that time, America. It is time for episode 64. We have arrived at the 760 Championship, also known as the Dream Car Championship. And it is... <clears throat> this is going to be a bit crazy, because obviously this is a championship with the very fastest cars in the series. So, expect some spills along the way. At least that's what I'd have to do, anyway. I started to imagine we're gonna get some spills along the way. Because being in the fastest cars, we also have to take the races to longer, and usually slightly more treacherous courses. Something as simple as... I don't know, a, like a... Track names me. Something like a Barcelona is just not quite going to cut it in a car of these calibers. Or in these cars of this caliber. So, uh, without any further delays, let's move into the first of the six races on offer. And we are green from round one of the episode. It is off to Le Mans. Le Mans? Or whatever French? I don't care. Circuit de la Sar, however you want to call it. And, uh... We did have a qualifying session that determines the starting grid, but the 20 cars were mostly figured out well before that. Um... Last of those qualifiers was one Thrasher in his brand new Ferrari F50. As he qualified last due to a lack of straight line speed, He's currently getting used up by Barbara a little bit. I mentioned most of them because there is one driver here that, uh, well, wasn't ever supposed to be in the race. If I can find them, here we are. Uh, yeah, this car not only wasn't supposed to be in the race, it was didn't. Uh, didn't even pause. It didn't even really exist, like, last week this time. Much less did it exist when sign-ups were up. Um... The 20th driver was originally supposed to be Yuval Kawakuta, however, following the events of episode 63, where his GTR was still pretty heavily damaged, albeit not total, but he was still in the process of repairing the thing. Uh, that was sort of put on hold. Can't really race with like 75% of a car now, can you? And so, to seek a replacement, we looked for basically any 760 class car that was on site. Well, earlier on in the morning, actually, no, it was late last night, or uh, late in the night before, uh, we saw this vehicle on track doing some kind of testing session or whatever. And it was Riho Futaba in this Lancia Delta, which has been overtaken by Thrasher. Now how in the name of God the Lancia Delta is in this category, you're probably thinking to yourself. Uh, listen to that engine. That's not a Delta engine. That is an RV26, that's a VR, what, it, it's, it's a GTR engine, basically. So, yes, this thing is a GTR swap Lancia Delta with 905 horsepower. So that's how it's in this category. I guess the second of Riho's interesting engine swap gimmick machinery following her SC430 GT500 powered Toyota Tundra. Now her next conquest is a GTR Delta. Currently Brian Ice is running away with the show. But a second or two clear of Wayne Hansen and equal machinery. And Thrasher has quickly made his way through the field. The straight line speed helps in a qualifying session, but when it comes to race pace, 
you're gonna get a little bit, you're gonna get a bit more use out of your cornering grip than that. And Thrasher is obviously getting all of the use out of it at the moment. As he's made his way up to third, behind only a pair of Lamborghini Murcielagos. It's like Hot Pursuit 2 all over a fucking game. Fun fact, in that game, the Ferrari F50 is the better car in that class, not the Murcielago. <laughs> Although, this Murcielago is also like 8 years newer, but that's besides the point. Shot to the outside of Wayne Hansen like he wasn't moving. And with. Well, it's only a two lap race here, as it'll almost be an eight minute long race, and Thrasher's gonna go for the lead right here. And using the superior corner and grip, he's going to take it and probably not get very far with it. This is like the classic handling versus power battle. The F50 dominates in the corners, but the Immersiolago with its horsepower figures will catch up in straightaways like this. However, not as much as I thought it was. As soon as Thrasher got a bit of slipstream, he kind of held even. One of the moves of the chicane, but he could not find room. Further back, Danvers has overtaken Watts for P4. Hansen is falling off of the back of the leaders. The Thrasher desperately attempts to stay close to ice. Under breaking and into sharp corners, he's gonna be able to do exactly that though, so. He even got the better exit through there, but that just doesn't matter because that Marcialgo has so much more power. And we have another heavy braking zone, the way I see it. Thrasher's gonna either have to pull off something crazy through Indianapolis, or he's gonna have to pull off something crazy through the force curve. So if the force chicanes aren't wide enough for overtakes, and he's certainly not gonna be able to do anything here. Watts is taking fourth place back from the Viper. through Indianapolis, and it is uh, not much closer. Through Arnage. Well, closer, but not close enough. Because here we are on yet another straightaway for the Lamborghini to pull away on. It's just like an automotive version of Tug of War. After this a little further, and then Ice drags it away again, and then Thrasher gets closer, then Ice gets further. Now we're getting into high-speed turns, and sure enough, Thrasher is definitely getting closer. Nose to tail through the first half of the Porsche curves. I think Ice is about to get a bit of deja vu here. Maybe sneaks the outside, he got there. They make some contact, as not much real estate is left. But Thrasher barely keeping it off of Ice and barely keeping it on the racetrack. Has the lead with only chicanes to go. And this looks like it has been a last moment upset. As we head through the final chicane, Thrasher is gonna get it done in the F50. Qualify and be damned, Thrasher wins the first round here at Le Mans, followed by Brian Ice and Wayne Hansen. Carly Watts eventually was P4 over David Danvers. Riho debuting basically in the frying pan, as it were. Or this should be the fire. If she's out of the frying pan into the fire pit here, she's gone from opening like debut week to uh, let's drive a brand new car I've never raced before in like one of the biggest championships on this Challenger's calendar. 
and she places 10th. So, not amazing, but not terrible either. On to round two, then. And we are green for round two, and behold, the most expensive track in the challenge series. Not because it's, like, particularly expensive to book in a, a weekend here. Actually, no. I said weekend. D a day here, as Wayne Hansen does turn one things. No, uh, this is actually a relatively easy track to get a hold of a day for, for the Challenge Series. Uh, I don't think you've been rejected yet by Monza. They just seem to like having racing here for some reason, I don't know why. It's almost like it's a fucking racetrack. Anyway, um, no, I call it that because pretty much every car that enters here comes out of it with at least a little bit of damage. Might just be a dented rear bumper, maybe a... Maybe a cracked rim, or like, maybe slightly cracked window glass, but... Something is getting damaged before the end of this race on your car. It does not matter what you do. As on POV driver Wayne Hansen just makes an absolute clown out of Iwasaki. Big sends outside, makes Iwasaki screw up and crosses them more like an absolute chump. <laughs> what a what a power move from the Murcielago. And speaking of, uh, Murcielago is running first, because the game is... Yeah, the uh, game. The random grid generator has given ICE two consecutive pole positions. Is, we'll see if he can actually capitalize off this one and score a victory this time. Clearly the only downfall of this Lancer Delta is its brakes. Sure enough, we'll have to see the exact numbers of it, but I'm pretty sure most of the field is pitting right here. This Wayne Hampton just scorches ahead of Stephanie Kaiser. Yeah. All but five cars have had to pit on lap one. All but fucking five. Really great showing from us here, guys. We look very professional here. Got to wonder if Monza even left us on the racetrack, because half of this series seems to be a safety hazard in turn one. Not helping. Not really helping our image there, Carly. Yeah, the five of non-damaged cars. Make their way through lap two here. Now, to the surprise of nobody, Wayne has smacked into the back of DeFrisco. What are you doing? I think he tried to swipe there on exit, but Dom had too much of a run. More contact. So this is going to give Dom a bunch of rear end damage and take him out of contention for the win. Having said that, he's still only going to go back to fifth, but still. And Hansen also is damaged, but of course he's not fitting, which tells me he's probably got ice next on his list. Well, he didn't do it into turn one, so either he's not, or he's trying to be a little more productive with it. Just to hang on the outside, but the Murcielago's big downfall is that weight value on the car. He's trying to pass him semi-normally, actually. Did you think Ice didn't notice what you did? as Ice boots him off into the sand on the outside of the second chicane. Honestly, that might have even been a mistake as he curb hopped there, really. It's hard to even say if that was what Ice's goal was. Maybe he was just 
be just misjudged and hit a curb. It's possible. I can just tell from his body language. Hansen's pushing now, so... His next action will be much more violent, something tells me. Yep, there it is. Damaging the back, trying to turn him left, actually. That's all that Hansen needs to do. Give him enough damage to force him into the pit lane. If Hansen doesn't care about the damage he's got, he's free to carry on. Admittedly, somewhat more passive than I was expecting, considering I was expecting a full-blown destruction. Oh, he locked the brakes up! I mean, just to keep the car on the road, I guess. Nothing else. And he's still got plenty of a lead over Carly Watts in P2. Despite that, or oh, major locking of the brakes. Yeah, just like as, as I said, even with that done to him, Brian Ice only goes from second to fourth. Did this dipshit lock up again? Yeah, he did. He manages to about fish it out of the gravel. But now he has lost the lead to Carly Watts. Only wonder where this is going. Now Hanson only really shows aggression towards Pacific Spirit, so is this just gonna be a cleaner move or is he desperate? Oh! Oh, oh, oh. Well, that was not what I was expecting at all. I'm not gonna lie. Yikes. So, Carly Watts has... goes into Ascari and forces Wayne Hansen onto the inside curbs unsettling him so much and spinning him around. And she's free to drive off into the sunset. He's still parked there. Of course you had to do that. Dumbass. You can't even be in the way right. As I think Hanson might have some engine problems following that. A little bit of smoke came out of his car. Carly Watts has taken the victory here at Monza. And Stephanie Kaiser will come in P2, basically off of the, uh... Basically off the fact that she was one of two drivers to finish the race without making contact with anybody and damaging her car. Despite damage, Ice comes home third and DePrisco fourth. And Wayne Hansen DNF'd as his car was unable to reach the finish line. We think it was possibly... There was no actual engine damage, but he might have been paranoid that there was. I'm not sure why he would have been paranoid of that, considering the fact that he ran face first into the wall, and the engine's in the middle of the car. But, I guess better safe than sorry, you know? Maybe it was suspension. I mean, I guess we didn't check all over the car. We only checked the engine because we saw the smoke, but it's possible that it was just smoke coming off the brake ducts. They do have to stop a pretty heavy vehicle in that Murcielago, weighing a ton and a half. And its horsepower allows it to reach pretty high speed, so... You may want to look into upgrading the carbon brakes, but... Uh, anyway... On to round three, I suppose. Well, the two clean drivers win the day here. Literally, 
I, I did say it, didn't I? This is the most expensive track in the Challenge Series calendar because of how many people will get damaged during the race. And sure enough, only two cars out of 20 avoided damage. That's, a, that's just kind of embarrassing, I'm not going to lie. For just everybody involved, including us admins. So let's just pretend that this race didn't happen. Round three. And the third race of the episode is green. As uh, we head off in turn one at Dragon Trail. To, uh, I guess, basically complete the European swing of this championship. Three races in Europe, two in Japan, and then we end off with a race in America. As, uh... And we are on board with Amy Shaughnessy in her relatively new Nissan G or Dismo GTR. Not brand new, but newish. And she's currently stuck behind Zoya and Watts. Did Wayne force? Ice wide there. No, actually, it was the other way around, kind of. Ice sort of almost swiped at Hanson trying to get ahead and failed. Oh, Jesus, Eric. So much for raising with honor, huh? Oh, Christ. Okay. I guess Ice wants revenge from the last... Well, if Futaba just got absolutely screwed there, Shaughnessy made full advantage of that, making up many places on the exit of that turn with a little bit of damage of her own. I, um, I've certainly seen smarter moves from a person who literally made a fortune off how smart he is. Right now, all he has found is a wealth of stupidity. Oversteer! Dom is in the lead, currently running for his life. He has an R34 between him and Wayne, so he doesn't have too much to worry about, especially not when Wayne's driving like that. Mika Harris might have a chance of passing. No. I almost bumped into him, actually. Two are teammates, and you're gonna do this. Much of contact made, but Amy gets through anyway. Wasn't really the most teamwork I've ever witnessed. Was there some sort of like test or something? Wayne Hansen now makes his way ahead of Iwasaki and Shaughnessy will do the same. There you can see the gap between DePrisco and everybody else there. Shaughnessy moves to P2, but Hansen manages to get it down the inside. They make a bit of contact on exit. 
Amy will try the outside. We'll get cut off by Wayne Hansen. And all right. Ooh. I guess Shaughnessy has seen enough. Holy shit. If she saw that, I guess, as an act of war from Hansen and decided, uh, good night. I have with three different areas of suspension damage and he is stuck in the gravel. So, um, he's out of a second race. We only have a lap and a half to go, so there's no point in a yellow flag and a restart. So that actually ends the event right there. Yeah, so Amy was like kind of ahead there. She broke really late, managed, managed to get the car turned. And he just kind of sends it back across on her. Hops the curb like a crazy person, bounces, forces Amy to slam on the brakes, I believe. Does she slam the brakes? Not really, but she's still seen enough. I think combine that with the fact that she knows what Wayne Hanson has done to PSR. And here is the end result. And does Dom get to see this in his mirror? <laughs> I swear to God. How much of this does Dominic see as he goes through this section? Oh my god, he does see that. That is... That's gotta be delicious to watch. <laughs> he just watched his teammate get revenge for him. <laughs> Possibly take Wayne Hansen all the way out of the series, as a matter of fact, because that car looks pretty fucked up. So, yeah. One more replay as we fade out here. That's too far forward. Yeah, and that is... That's Wayne Hansen. Eliminated.